I just thought that would be fun. All right, it's tutorial time. Uh, we're going to be doing box modeling. Um, box modeling is, uh, I think, good as an intro to doing um, 3D characters. Um, there's definitely a lot of things to take away from it, um, but really whenever you get into modeling, I think edge modeling is going to be the way to go, but uh, I think this is going to be a good kind of look over um, doing some stuff in 3D. Uh, as far as making a kind of simple character and this is just the way I go about it uh, and it's fairly simple and we do have a bit of a thunderstorm going on so hopefully uh, we won't pick the mic won't pick that up too much but um so I've got this um, character I don't know what his name is uh, some red and blue guy um, with a spider on him not sure what that's all about but what we're gonna do is we're gonna start with a box because it's box modeling so uh, I'm just starting with a small box, kind of like that. And the first thing I'm going to do before I get anywhere is I'm going to go with move and I'm going to right click on each one of my spinners here, which will set this to zero and zero. And let's not have gray because that would be kind of tricky to see. So we'll just go with purple. And I want to make sure that my box is set up for one by one by one um, segments and typically I try to make sure that all of these are the same although it's not really necessary but let's just go with uh, we'll say 4x4x4 four by four by four. I'll see if I can make this file available uh, to download um, I'll see if I've got a way to do that and have a link included uh, to share that um, so I've got my segment set up there so I'm going to right click convert to editable poly um, so the reason I move this down is just so that I know that my model is centered in the origin and things should line up nicely with the reference that we have here. Um, obviously this is Spider-Man and Marvel stuff so um, hopefully I don't get sued for that. But uh, we've converted to editable poly and now I'm going to go into element mode. And if you don't know, element mode allows me to select uh, my entire object as long as it's uh, sharing at the very least one edge so if I hold shift and drag I can copy that element and now I've got two elements that are within the same object which is called box 001 uh, let's go ahead and give this a name of spider-man you know what let's uh, insect I don't want to get sued insect man guy there we go insect guy that's gotta not be taken alright so anyway I can select individual elements that make up this entire object here which is insect guy um, I'm gonna get rid of the second one you don't have to follow that part but I'm starting off with this and what you'll notice is if I take this element and let's say I drag it out here as an element my pivot points gonna remain at 0 0 0 select um, that's because I didn't move the object, I moved one of the elements within the object. So I just want to be very clear on terminology here. So I'm going to take this and move this up to his neck and start moving around some of these vertices. So let's move these just to kind of line up where his neck is. Just to kind of start with like I said this is the way I go about it doesn't mean it's the best way ever it's just the way that I like to uh, kind of work if I'm going to be box modeling um, so technically I'm gonna be doing some edge modeling here as well um, just to make this a little bit faster so uh, one thing to keep in mind is when you're working with your reference I move things in one view uh, so if I ended up moving this um, in these two directions here if I hit F for my front view, I've only got to move it inward here. I don't have to do this because I've already moved it in two of those directions, so I only need to move it in the uh, one last direction. So what I'm going to do is um, I'm going to select the vertices that make up this section here, which as I go into front view, you can see I selected here and 
here. I'm going to hit Alt X just to see through my object here. And I'm going to point, pull these in uh, just a little bit. And I'll do the same here in the back. Now, the reason I'm scaling is so I can move both of these the same amount in the same direction, like that. Um, come back into the left. One's back here. Um, move those out just a little. And the ones on the bottom here, I'll pull those in just a little bit. Um, so to speed this up, typically when you're box modeling, you're going to be messing around with uh, three basic tools. Uh, so if I go into face, polygon, whatever you want to call this, quad mode, uh, it labels it as polygon mode. Um, if I go into polygon mode, I've got um, some editable poly functions here that I can go through. Uh, the main ones are going to be extrude, bevel, and inset. So to kind of figure out what these are doing, extrude, I'm going to use the settings next to here. So what extrude does is it takes that face and it extrudes it out 10 units. Now I can extrude by group, which is the default, or by local normal, which means in the direction the polygon is facing, or by polygon, which means if I had multiple selected, it would do each one um, in the direction those polygons are facing, but not connecting them together. Okay, close out of that. So I didn't do anything. So that was extrude. Inset is uh, extruding without height, or it's kind of like creating a new polygon inside of the polygon um, without giving it any height. So basically I'm just extruding inward. And then bevel is kind of a combination of the two. What bevel does is it combines uh, a height amount for the extrude and it puts it as an outline, but basically an inset. Um, so what it's doing is if I put this at zero, and get rid of my height, you can see this is now working like inset. And if I set this to zero, this is working like extrude. And I put them together and I get bevel. Okay. Now if I hit the check mark, that means I'll finish out and I'll bevel. If I hit the plus though, it'll allow me to um, do uh, extrude and uh, inset this the amount that I want and then it'll let me go again. So if I hit plus, it's going to do another one. Plus, it'll do another one. If I hit check, it's just going to finish that out. Now, I don't want to do that because that would look weird here, but the reason I show you that is because um, I can extrude the sections of the body here downward uh, to the groin. Um, but that's not the way I really like to work. I find coming over and using these, um, they're fine, but um, there are some faster ways that I can kind of manipulate without doing this. So I'll show you that. So I'm going to delete the polygon that's on the bottom here. So that's going to give me uh, an open face. So the faces or the polygons that I'm seeing here are actually the back faces. And they don't actually render. So if I come in here and hit render, these back faces we don't see. We just see the ones that are facing outward. These are their normal uh, facing direction. So if I right click, come to object properties, I can turn off my back faces. I can call, I can turn on basically back face call. This means do not show the back face in the viewport. So it doesn't draw them. So now we can see that. Um, so border only allows me to select border edges. This means areas that border a hole in our mesh. Since I deleted this one on the bottom, there's a hole in my mesh, I'm allowed to select it here. Or I can come to Edge, which will allow me to select any edge. And that is uh, a line that's drawn between two vertices. Okay. Or you could say a line that's going around uh, a polygon. And then our vertex are our points or vertices uh, for plural. Um, so I'm going to come to border edge. I'm going to select this again. So in Max, if I want to duplicate things or if I want to make clones of things or uh, things of that nature, I can hold shift. And if I hold shift and I move, I'll drag out new faces, which is basically like extruding. 
um, and I can do this as many times as I want like this and make new ones. And I find this to be faster than coming up here and clicking on things and putting in numbers. Um, so what's nice about this is um, uh, I'm going to be extruding down and creating part of the geometry here. And I want to keep certain things in mind. I want to keep in mind uh, edge loops and um, um, basically building geometry uh, in a way that um, allows me to extrude out other objects. Um, and I do this in a smart way. I don't want to sit here and extrude down a little bit and scale this out so it fits and then down a little bit like this. And I don't want to do this. I'm making things way harder on myself if I do that. So let's work easy instead. So I know that whenever I create this arm I like to work in a way that it will give me six polygons that I can extrude out to make the arm. The reason I do that is because anytime I model a hand I always end up with six polygons uh, for the end of where the hand is. So that makes it easy to connect these together. And I always work that way. And I know that uh, if I always work that way that I'm not going to have a problem where I have more polygons in the hand than I do in the arm and things like that. So it's good to kind of um, think ahead a little bit. Um, also, when I'm extruding down here, uh, I'm mostly going to be working in the side view for this first section. I'm going to be extruding out here and then I'll take some faces that are here and extrude out to get this section and this section. And I really only need to worry about modeling one half of this character because uh, when I do that I can use um, some modifiers to um, create the other half without having to model the other half. So uh, again that's another example of just kind of working smarter. So. Um, just starting out here, I'm going to hold shift, I'm going to drag down, and I'm going to come like halfway down um, the arm, where the arm's going to come out here. So I'm just going to line this up with back here, and I can always pull these in later, because um, I'm going to end up need, um, needing to do that. Um, and these are going to come out to about the chest. And the back probably doesn't come out this far. So like I said, I'll probably end up moving some of this around after just based on um, what I know I'm going to end up wanting. Alright, so that's that section. I'll come down to about where the bottom of the armpit's going to be. And again, I'm taking these and I'll just drag this down to about where uh, the bottom of the pecs here are. And I'm going to come in just a little bit here. And I'm just going to continue working this way. Now, if I'm in border mode, I'm going to select that hole easily. But while I go to edge mode, it's still going to have those edges that make up the border uh, also. So I'm going to come uh, halfway down the abdomen. And I'm going to pull these in because I'm guessing he's uh, in fairly good shape here. I'm trying to make sure that things look okay here to fix that. Um, that's okay. And then I'm going to come down to um, basically where his hips are going to be here. And I'm going to leave that just like that for now. And drag this down yet again. And now I'm going to go into the front view just to see roughly where this is. Um, so I'm okay with this. Um, so I'm going to drag down two more times just to uh, kind of bring this down and around where um, the bottom of the groin is here. So, um, and I'll end up kind of fixing these things. So this should actually come out a little bit. Now the reference that we're working with here, um, which was created by um, people at Marvel, um, this reference isn't really showing uh, the back and the butt. So we kind of have to just go a little bit off of, alright, what, what do we know about human anatomy? So I know the back kind of curves in and the butt obviously is going to come out a little bit. Come out a little butt. Alright, so we've come about halfway down the groin and I'm just going to bring this down to about here. I'm also going to scale this in here 
and scale in this direction as well. And that's going to just kind of finish up the torso. All right. So now I'm going to extrude out from here from these polygons and create this section of the body. And while I'm at it, um, let's see. Oh, I guess I'll scale just to keep this even. I'm just kind of scaling some of this in because the part that I extrude out is going to kind of make up this other section here. Um, and I'm not really liking. If I double click on one of these edges, it's going to select all the ones that go around. That's that's called an edge loop. I'm just going to bring this up a little bit just to where the top. Uh, what are these called? Trap trapezoids? Trap of something? Anatomy, folks. You got to learn it. Um, okay, so that's about that. Let's bring this section in again. Double click to select all of them around here. And I'm just kind of, let's see, might have come in a little too far here. All right. Um, another thing that's going to happen is whenever I do symmetry, I'm going to get an edge that runs down the center here. And that's going to be good um, and very important for a number of reasons. One, it'll allow me to um, pull some of these edges in, mainly. All right, now I'm going to select just this section here. I'm not going to worry about the other side for now. So uh, I can't hold shift and drag these. Actually, I can, but what I'm going to end up doing is making a copy of those polygons. And I'm not going to delete them and extrude out because that would be kind of a waste of time. So in this case, I'm just going to use extrude. And I can kind of show you quickly the difference between, let me bring this in to about somewhere in there. So this is group, that's local, that's by polygon. So you can see how the polygons split apart. Group comes straight out. Local kind of um, tries to move in the directions the polygons are facing and it averages out. I kind of like the way that looks a little better. So I'm going to use that. So now um, I'm going to go into edge mode here. I'm just going to drag this down to where the arm is about to come out. And middle of the arm, armpit. Maybe come just a little bit further out here. Again, I'm, all, I'm trying to, at the most part, just work in one direction because I've already kind of moved things around uh, a little. Okay, and then we have this last part here. And this is going to uh, come up this way. And this is where our leg will end up coming out. Um, which will give me um, nice polygons that kind of work their way up and back down the other leg. Same idea with this one. Okay. So kind of like that. Now what I'll probably have to do is scale some of this in because these vertices here should be near where the arm's going to come out. So if I come back into the left view and hit Alt X, I can kind of see through my geometry enough to see, okay, my arm is somewhere here. So I'm just going to drag this back to about where my arm is. And again there. This one comes back in a little bit. And here's the hexagon shape that I was talking about. So I should have um, six edges that run around here. Pull that in. Move that up. And I'm trying to keep this uh, very round um, sort of shape. And the reason being is I don't want to pull this in because then my arm's going to have a dip in it. I don't want that. Okay, so there's that. And then some of these other ones can uh, get pulled back. Actually, I'm just going to take the edges along the side here and just scale them in a little bit. All right, there we go. Let's 
see what we end up having here. Okay. So this area here is being pulled in. I'm not that worried about it because I'm building this character so he's a low enough um, poly count that I will be adding a turbo smooth after this and that'll give me some more polygons. Or uh, if I'm looking to keep my poly count really low, I can go in and add in more edges as I need to to pull this out. So I'd be able to go in uh, and basically cut in edges around here uh, and kind of even this out a little bit. Um, but I'm not going to worry about that just now. And these edges in the back, um, kind of don't mind where those are. Pull these ones out a little bit. Just a little. Kind of like that. All right. So let's take a look at what the symmetry is going to look like of this, um, just so I can get an idea. Um, and um, actually we'll work this way so what I'll do is I'm gonna go into element mode and select this whole thing and I'm gonna turn on a slice plane so the slice plane is basically going to slice apart or divide um, uh, polygons that I have selected so I'm gonna rotate this 90 degrees so I wanna turn on this angle snap toggle this will allow me to rotate if we look down in the Y direction here, if I rotate around, we can see that it's snapping to every five degrees. So it'll make it easier to make it 90. I'll let off of there. I'm gonna go to move, and I know the center of my character is zero based on where I'd started the character. So I want this slice plane to be at zero. So if I move that there, you can see I'm gonna get this slice happening directly down the center of my character. So to finish that out, I'm gonna hit slice. I hit slice and now what I can do is go into the front view and select all the polygons on this side and delete. So what that allows me to do and I actually might pull these back uh, out a little bit just because I don't like where they're kind of lying um, now that I have these ones that run down the center. Um, so let me go ahead and do that real quick. I'm just gonna split the difference between here and here. Kind of like that. Yeah, that's okay. Um, um, kind of want there to be another subdivision there, but I'm just going to leave that for now until I see how this looks. So here's what I can do. Now that I have this one half, I'm going to mirror the other half over. Um, so I'm going to go to mirror, and mirror is going to obviously mirror the other side. Um, but I want to do an instance. So what that means is whatever I end up doing to one half of my model will happen to the other half, and vice versa. So this part here is a separate um, basically a separate model on its own, but it refers back to the original. Another thing, and I don't really know what's causing that because this didn't used to happen in Max, but when I mirror over things, uh, I can see that my edges here, let me hide this one, are actually being shown on the inside of the mesh. Um, and there's a way to fix that, but right now I'm just treating this one as a duplicate. And I'm even going to change the color just so I know just so I can remember it's a separate object. So I'll unhide my model here. Um, so let's see. Um, might pull these in just slightly. Now that I have them to kind of move around a little bit. That way my chest kind of comes out, comes back in, out, and back in. Okay, so now I'm going to extrude my arm. There's a couple of different ways I can go about doing this. Um, a different way to create the arm. Um, and I haven't really found a major problem with um, the way I'm about to do this. So I'm going to do um, extrude. And I'm only going to extrude this about halfway. And I hit OK. And now I'll do bevel. 
and I'm going to come out to where the arm basically comes out to here and I'm going to finish that off. I'm also going to go to my edges here I'm going to pull this out just a little bit more so if I had the arm in a T pose which means the arm was basically coming out so it looks like a letter T I could extrude this all the way down um, but my arms coming down this way and I've kind of started doing this and I don't know whether or not it's the best idea but if I can extrude the arm from here down I'm not certain to if this is a bad idea for the topology because once the arms moved up this is gonna cause the geometry here uh, if I were to animate this to um, move up basically so I'm going to um, well, one, I'm going to move some stuff around here a little bit because right now the shoulders here, this is coming out a bit too far. So I'm just going to pull that in and I'm going to pull this in a little bit. And But I haven't yet really found that this causes a major problem with starting to animate the character uh, moving around. Um, if you find it to be a problem, the easy way to fix it is just basically delete the upper shoulder area here or detach the bottom part and connect it back here. It's really going to be that simple. Typically we want the uh, topology to work in the direction that the muscles that we have um, are working. So um, the muscles that we have here, let me hide my character are coming up this direction up into this muscle so they kind of come up and around and then these work their way down the arm um, so I don't know I mean I don't really have a major problem with doing it the way I'm doing it and look, typically when I'm modeling this uh, I won't be doing the um, box modeling technique um, because I've modeled for a long time but for beginners I don't find a major problem with doing this um, if somebody tells you otherwise then go ahead and uh, fix that for them so now I've got these six polygons again on the bottom that I can start extruding the rest of the arm out from so what I try to do is when I'm extruding I do it based on what I call peaks and valleys so my peak here if I was to draw a line from here down to the bottom of the wrist I'd have these areas that come out and back in out and back in and then areas that have, uh, like my elbow here, um, I want to have more polygons around here because this is going to bend. So uh, areas that are going to bend or twist, you want to have more polygons in those areas. Same with the wrist, uh, same with the where the legs meet the hips, the knees, the ankles. So I'm going to extrude this out. And I'm just going to hit the check mark here. The reason I'm only hitting the check, I don't need to put in a number there because I'm just going to move this anyway. So again, I'm going to draw this basically down. I'm rotating this just slightly uh, because uh, I feel like it. Uh, my topology, if uh, it runs almost perpendicular to the lines running this direction, it, it works a little bit better. So that's the reason I do that. Move this out a little. And you can see how on the other side it's uh, basically matching up with whatever I create and I'm gonna move this back just so it meets up with the uh, art that we have same idea here and just pull this back a little bit let's scale this out okay and then I can just kinda keep working this way um, so for now I'm just going to extrude down to and if I use bevel it, it's not going to really matter it's going to be the same idea because I can scale this down if that tends to mess me up um, but what I'm trying to keep in mind when I'm doing this is I don't know where I was going with that sentence I don't think that's where I wanted to start it um, I'll put in the elbow after so uh, right now I'm just extruding to the middle section here or where the elbow is I can always um, add what's called an edge loop in 
uh, as needed. And I'll, I'll do that as part of this. Something else I'm going to do is double click on the edge loop that runs around the arm here. And I'm going to constrain the movements of my vertices and edges to the edges that already exist. So what's this mean? It means that as I move this, it's going to only follow the edges that actually are here. Um, so that. Um, as you can see, if I go to no constraints, I can move this anywhere I want. Okay. Another thing I want to check before I get too far is that this is remaining um, kind of this hexagonal shape, and I don't have any areas that are kind of being pulled in. Oops, pulled in like that. So we're still good on the shape that we have here. So again, I'm going to attach. I don't want to attach. Um, extrude, check, and I'm going to move this halfway down here, roughly. Scale this out a little. Extrude. And I will actually come part way down here instead of just going all the way down to the wrist. Scale this down. Rotate. And I want to make sure that this is still kind of matching up with my arm here. I'll just double click the edge loop here, pull that back and there as well okay and we're not going to be putting on, uh, hands on him right now right now we're only worried about making the body uh, I'll probably do a second part where I show making the hands and attaching it and the head is a whole other um, tutorial so uh, we won't be doing that in this one um, okay so back to extrude and I'll move this down to the bottom of the wrist. I'm just trying to flatten this out a little bit. We're starting to get a little bulgy there. Scale that down in that direction. And I'm basically just eyeballing here. I can't really see the reference at this point. And they have the hand cocked off at this weird angle. Uh, we're not going to be rotating like that for our hand. Alright. So I'm going to call that as finished arm, except for I'm going to add in my um, my loops. Um, I think in uh, Maya it's called edge loop. Um, and then in Max the tool is called, um, not object paint, um, swift loop. So basically what this does is allows me to add loops in. So I can come down here to the uh, elbow and just put in two loops and double click these just so they're not perfectly straight lines here bulge this out a little and same idea with this just slightly um, this will also allow me to just grab the vertex here in the back and pull it out a little bit for my elbow um, I'm just pulling it out ever so slightly. Okay, so pretty happy with that. If at any point you want to take a look and see what this looks like, um, I'm going to delete the polygon here on the top just because that's where our head's going to get attached. And I'm also going to scale down these two edges just slightly. And I'm going to turn on Constraint to Edge. The reason I do that is just so I'm rounding out the neck hole. And I'm going to pull this out just a little bit too. Let's go in the front view and make sure this still kind of matches up. Turn my constraint off just so I can take a look here. And I'm kind of modeling everything just slightly bigger than it is. The reason being is when you go to Turbo Smooth this it pulls all of your poly, uh, your vertices in just a little bit all right so we can kind of see how that looks um, I would probably also add in an edge loop here just because the area you're gonna have the most problem with with modeling it this way is the armpit and uh, you know that's where you would want to if this is going to be a big issue 
all I would really have to do is select these polygons and uh, grow my selection and then I could just detach this I'm going to detach it as an element rotate it move this up somewhere about there I'd have to delete the polygons here you know we'll just do this just to kind of show uh, some of the other functionality here so I'll delete these polygons delete Let's select them hit delete and also show bridge so bridge oh yeah okay I'm going to select the polygons on this side the ones on this side and when I click bridge it's gonna bridge this gap across here and what I can also do is if I select this border and this border um, something always seems to happen when you're bordering or bridging two sections like this and also let me move this one polygon just away a little bit so I can see this work sounds like my daughter's out in the other room getting tickled so if you hear that that's what's happening I'm not hiding a child in the closet again <coughs> um, so I'm gonna actually do this I'm gonna grow my selection I'm gonna move actually shrink it just a little and move this this way a little just to line these up so what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna bridge between here and here so I'm gonna select my two borders this one and this one and I'm gonna hit bridge but I'm expecting a problem to happen so let's see what happens I bridge and the problem didn't happen so that's good a um, little bit of kinda of weirdness going on here which I can fix but um, every now and then this edge will try to bridge to here rather than to where it did it didn't happen this time so that's good um, so I'm going to just kind of fix my topology a little bit since this is now looking a little bit strange kind of fix this up so it doesn't look so bad always good when you're perfectly silent doing during a uh, tutorial that's coming out really far It's always good to get like really odd angles at things too, just so you can kind of see how this is looking. Okay, and now basically your uh, pectoral muscles kind of flow into these. So I'm just going to kind of pull this up, pull this down a little bit here, go up here. fun. I don't know if that's being picked up, but um, anyway. Just keep going here. Some bit of twisting going on here. And this should be pulled out. so crooked and then this should come up uh, about done 
fixing that. That looks a little bit better. So ideally this is what you kind of want to see now. Um, I did my reference, uh, I'm working off of the reference here so I kind of went that way but this is more than likely going to give you the best case scenario for um, blending and stuff like that for your animation so it's good to kind of do that. So let's see what this looks like again if I turbo smooth it now. So I'm just adding this modifier. Okay. Now the idea is after I've done this um, I can convert this back to an editable poly and now I've got some other um, vertices so I can go in and kind of clean some of this up and add a little bit more detail. I still feel like I need some more edge loops here but I'm just going to leave this as is for now but what I'm looking at is there's a lot of stretching happening here so I could go in and I'm just going to go ahead and do this because it's, it's bothering me and I'll grab these edges make sure my edge constraint is on here and just kind of fix that that's right I said bothering me alright and we'll pull this up slightly so these are kind of going to be where our pecs are maybe a little bit I feel like this arm is kind of extended up a little high, but now that we've kind of brought this out to the side, it, it's, it should be okay, but um, anyway, you can sit here messing around with the topology as much as you like. Uh, I feel like it's easier to do it now while this is in a lower polygon state than, um, you know, if I tried to do this after I've smoothed everything out. That's good enough. So let's do the leg. So the leg is going to be basically the same idea. This time we're going to try something a little different though. Uh, just as a, another idea. So I'm going to do extrude. I'm going to hit yeah. Check. So this time what I'm going to do is bring this leg down. I'm going to rotate this. I'm going to kind of flatten it out. So I'm using scale and I'm scaling it downward. and I'm going to scale this down to about the size of our ankle. So it's going to give me this. Now that's not going to work very good for animation, especially since now I don't have any knees. Um, and the reason I'm doing this is just to show you another way to kind of go about uh, making this. So let me come down just a little bit more here. Make sure everything's kind of lined up here before I get too far along. Okay. So in this case, what I would do is I'd use Swift Loop, which we just saw a second ago. And I'm going to cut in uh, Polygon here for the knee. So here I'm going to, uh, it's already going to be selected for me, put this now basically where I want it to be. So turn on X-Ray here. Alt-X is the shortcut for that and just kind of bring that in a little bit bigger since turbo smooth is going to make it smaller for me okay and now I'll swift loop in about where we see the boot here and I can see here that we need to scale out oh actually before I do that uh, I do too much there um, I want to make sure that this is lined up. That wouldn't have caused too many issues, but again, it's better to make sure these things are kind of done now than later. Okay. So, again, I'm going to swift loop. I'll put one in the middle of the uh, upper thigh there, or thigh, and then one about midway down. 
And again, I'll move this over, come up with it just a little bit. Use scale, scale that out to about as wide as that is. On my left view, move this back a little bit. And scale this this way. Kind of like that. The thigh one. Scale it up. Move it forward. Come back in the front view. Scale it one direction here. And um, actually going to turn on my edge here. I'm trying to so I'm rotating these, but they're going to keep their same um, uh, shape that I basically have here based on the edge constraint um, with using that. So I just had that so I could rotate that all just slightly. Um, so this is another way of going about this. So I've got my main sections. Now I want to cut in. These are basically uh, the major peaks and valleys, but now I want to go in and add the ones around the knees, ones around the shins. So I'll swift loop here. And this time I'm going to do this here. Uh, I won't do those ones just yet. So I'll do the ones um, at the top and bottom of the knee. And the one halfway down the calf or shin or whatever you want to call that. Turn that back off. And again, doing the same thing. Moving to the left. Scaling down, going to the left view, make sure this basically lines up. While I'm here, do this one. I might end up adding in another edge loop here just so I can round out this muscle a little more. Um, grab this section. really mind how that is. Um, what I might do though is turn on edge constraint and move these sections down a little closer to the knee. And these ones a little up closer to the knee. And then I'm just going to kind of move these in individually. aren't really too far off. Move that one out a little bit. And in the back, I'm going to do the same idea. Pull these down closer to the um, closer to the knee. So turn on my edge constraint again. Alright. And so I will Swift loop here and here. Not so much down there. Double click that. So I'm going to just scale out, well, turn off edge, constrain. Make sure I didn't bulge that out too far. No. Maybe just go a little extra here, just to kind of emphasize that a bit more. All right, and again, double click that edge loop, scale out, and I'm just moving these in just slightly. Tweaking that a little bit. Um, let's go in the front view, make sure this looks okay. So this can get pulled in. Grab both of those. That's kind of okay. Run that out a little. Okay. Um, I don't think I'm going to add anything right here right now. 
I don't think I moved anything there, so let's go back to edge. Let's move that. So I'll scale this out. And okay. My bum's gonna get a bit flat here, so let's pull some of this out. Let's see. Again, this will be something that we can fix at any point. I don't have to worry about getting slightly flat there. All right, um, grab here, pull this down just a little. So this rounds kind of down. That I'm okay with, I think. Um, so I'm going to swift loop one more time just here for the thigh, just to give another little area um, to allow any sort of stretching to happen. I want it to kind of minimalize that. Let's minimalize a word. Alright, so let's go a little bigger. And this will also kind of help with his lack of tuchus. Uh, it's a start. Oh, I never closed this up here. Um, we just need to bridge. So I'll select the two vertices there and just click bridge. Close that up. And that's basically it for the start of the um, the character. I'll do the foot really quick. Pull this in just a little. Like I said, whenever I turbo smooth this, I'm going to be able to fix areas like this, so I won't have the weird butt thing happening. Pull in some sections of the back. Just to get a little bit of indentation. Alright, so we'll extrude down just to make a quick foot. Should also be more vertices down around the ankle here. I'm rotate this. Alright, so I'm going to extrude twice. So here's going to be the first one. Our foot is not going to follow this. It's not going to go off this way. He's not pointing his toes out. Um, I don't know many people that point their toes out that much. Um, but we won't be following that perfectly. We're going to kind of come straight out with the foot. We extrude again. This one's going to basically be on the ground. I'm just going to scale this flat. Because you know everybody's got perfectly flat feet on the bottom, right? No? Kind of pull this out a little bit. Pull this out. hit extrude and I'm going to swift loop here um, so this is going to be the front of the foot
pull some of these parts out a little bit. Pull this down just a little to round out the foot. Alright, swift loop. I'll probably do that again. a little bit and this should actually come out more towards the front than the other section missed missed this piece okay and now just so our foot doesn't look completely messed up. We'll twist it just slightly outward. Swift loop again here if I need to, you know, add more to the arch or to the toes. So we'll do both. And pull this section back. That's better. I want to have a nice kind of flow of my polygons here. I don't want parts that come up and come down. This makes it strange. Speaking of strange, let's line these up a bit better. slightly. So it's kind of the right foot curve here. And then I could extrude one more time here just to uh, do the final tip there. Um, while I'm thinking about it, let's swift loop for my ankles. exaggerate this the more this will kind of the better this will look whenever I turbo smooth because even though this is looking really bulky and kind of far out whenever I um, turbo smooth this it's gonna you know smooth that out a lot more 
Alright, so I'll just add the last little part here. And this is just going to be a bevel. So, bevel. Not quite that far. I'm just going to bring down this so it's not completely coming to a point there. I may end up relaxing this foot a little bit. So to do that, just hit grow. Just select everything here. And do relax. This is just going to help smooth things out, smooth out our topology a little bit. Hit check. Usually after I do that, I have to scale just a little bit, just because that kind of pulls everything in just a little. It's not so bad. Alright, that's, that's basically it for the main part of the character here. Um, one thing you'll notice, if I hit F4, which turns off my wireframe, you can see that this guy is faceted. That means that he has no smoothing between any of his vertices, or between any of his polygons. So let's fix that. I'm going to select everything, the whole element, and I'm going to come down. One, I'm going to set his material IDs. This is for something later, but I'm just going to set them all currently to one. So they all are the same. These are my smoothing groups, which means that some of the stuff um, is smoothing and some of the polygons aren't. I'm going to hit clear all and I'm going to set all of them to one and we'll look at the difference that this makes. So now everything is kind of smoothed out. And if I wanted any areas to um, kind of have a little more of a hard edge to them I could put them on a different um, smoothing group. Also, get rid of the uh, polygons on the hand there. Um, that's it. That's the box modeling tutorial for the body. Um, the final part to wrap it up, delete our instance because it's inside out basically. It's normals are flipped. And I'm going to do a symmetry modifier. Symmetry and we'll see everything disappears. Um, so we're going to set our X direction here to the modifier to flip and it's going to flip. Before I do that though I'm going to turn off weld seam because I've had a lot of issues with symmetry adding in extra vertices that I don't want and it usually has to do with this weld seam. Um, so I'm going to turn that off um, and I'll turn off slice along mirror and because I've set mine up in a way that I don't have any polygons on this side so it shouldn't mess anything up. I'm going to right click and convert back to an editable poly making this one mesh but you'll see that I'm currently at two separate elements. I have to weld everything here. So what I'm going to do is go to border hit control A which will select all border edges so that's all these red areas that light up and then I'm going to uh, convert uh, our border selection to edges, or um, yeah, our border selection to vertex or vertices. So I'm going to hold control and click vertex, and now everything that was selected as a border will be selected as vertices. And now I just need to weld them. So I'm going to go to the weld settings, and I shouldn't have any issues here. Um, the issues I would want to watch for is if this threshold was set so high that other things started welding that I didn't want. Like that happening. And it was set at point 0.1 and I don't have any vertices that are within a distance of point 0.1 of each other besides the ones that are along the seam. So I can just hit check and now this has been welded and now we can kind of see the final body. Um, I do plan on doing a hand 
tutorial and I will um, do that one and connect it to the body. Um, that one will probably come out um, probably a couple days if not next week. Uh, hopefully I remind to do, uh, remember to do it. So hopefully you enjoyed this and found it very informative and uh, learned a little something about modeling. Um, please like and subscribe, leave comments, let me know what you think of the videos, what I could do better, uh, what you would like to see done, give me suggestions, and uh, share the videos if you like them and you think other people would like them. Thanks so much for watching.